If you haven't yet, check out part 1 where we explored the many possibilities of what the Demogorgon could be. So let's take a look at the other dimensions of this creature, such as the personality. It has a beastly or beast or animal-like personality that is dependent on instincts, which is all rooted within its physiology. The ecology of the creature, well, we discovered it in the Upside Down realm, right? But we're not sure what that exactly entails or what it is. It can also be called the in-between, the netherworld, or underworld realm. And therefore, this creature is a sort of plane walker, most likely accepting of a wide range of temperatures and living conditions. It doesn't have any fur, but the Upside Down doesn't look like a warm place either. So it's not necessarily a warm-blooded creature. So let's take a look at that mentioned physiology, starting with its appearance. It has a lean, hairless body, long digitigrade legs with bird-like feet. If you don't know what digitigrade legs are, they're like the legs of our many four-legged creatures, such as horses, dogs, deer, with what one could say are extended sort of toes. And a sedactylid, with three main toes and a fourth, which actually is counted as the first, uh, sort of smaller back toe. This beast is not overly muscular, but has rather sturdy bones. It's five-fingered with the middle three overly elongated with pointy fingers, but not necessarily clawed. There's no noticeable genitalia, and with a hunched posture it holds a strong neck that supports a somewhat featureless head. There are no observable eyes, ears, nor nose, but rather slits for the distinct mouth. When open, the star-shaped mouth consists of five fleshy petals with pinkish-red gums, dribbled with intimidating fangs. The anatomy. Humanoid with notable differences, such as lack of nipples, which again correlates with the lack of exterior reproductive organs and various exaggerated bone structures. Does the creature breed or is it a different type of spawn? Does it breed and develop as plants do? As the face might suggest being reminiscent of the world's largest bloom, the flower of the Rafflesia Arnoldi plant. Though it may not be obvious, there could be a number of ways that it could be speculated to reproduce. As the numerous sharp canines hint, it is carnivorous, and as for its other senses, one could imagine it to have a rather developed pineal gland. Controversial as it may be, I bring it up here as a scientific possible explanation for its developed sixth sense, not being in need of having eyes, nose, or ears in order to sense around itself. Even the creator artist mentioned that it has none of these features, because it evolved to exist in this other sort of realm with other sort of abilities. Of course, aside from the pineal gland, it could be explained by a number of other additional organs, or brain extensions or developed workings. And that artist Aaron Sims did mention that the Demogorgon, as it is a highly adapted predator, as sharks, has a great sensitivity to locating blood. Is it heat sensitive as well like vipers? Seems unlikely, as we can clearly see it having troubles locating a victim at times. Physically, it's as strong and as fast as the appearance suggests. The metabolism appears to be highly efficient, keeping the creature active and in shape. Now let's take a look at one of my favorite parts, which are the abilities and strengths, and most of the strengths we have already mentioned. High sensitivity to blood, strong and quick with a large size, decent stealth ability, suited for hunting, extremely durable for survival in a variety of biomes and atmospheres. Dimension slash plane crossing, as we saw it appear in a various variety of places in this realm and through various variety of ways as well. Which, well, sort of showed us that it can open dimension doors. It seems so, but it also could be aided. But that also brings along the strength of having an easy way of escape from our reality when it needs to. Serious bite damage. Just look at that mouth! <coughs> Possibly not necessarily invulnerable, but having a stronger resistance to attacks on this plane, this 3D world. We know it is extremely tough and resistant. And as for the weaknesses, well, it's easy to be lured with blood. It has beast-like instinctive behavior, as we mentioned earlier, without serious strategizing involved. A lack of developed intelligence. 
and well, probably an inability to use tools as well. Now, one of the greatest parts of these shows, the power level. Power level of one, being a slug, for example. Power level of five, a small or very young Kraken. And ten, an entity beyond our known dimension. I would say the Demogorgon deserves a four. It would take a really experienced human warrior to put this creature down for an eternal sleep. And finally, this is the portion where I share my thoughts on the concept of the creature. It certainly looks like a lot of time and research was taken to get to it, and it is highly appreciated from my end. The internet speaks. Look how many images are out there. I saw it at least 10 times spoiling it for me before watching the series, and I didn't even search for it. It's an awesome concept from head to toe to ability. It acts as a beast, it looks as a beast, it's a balanced, coherent monster. And that adds for me the realism part of this whole thing, making it quite memorable. Now finally, let's take a look at some similar beasts out there, taking into account ability and appearance. Well, first of all, a demon, especially considering that there's a variety of demons from all sorts of lore. Demons ranging from being intelligent to beastly, with powers that range from simple to complex. From Insidious, the red-faced demon from the further, a sort of astral realm. Alien, looking at alien depictions such as from the movie Signs. Devil, such as D&D's variety and range of devils just as their demons. A land shark beast, Pathfinder has its war shark. The lurking ray of D&D, but with legs, observing that mouth and said to live at the dark corners of the world. The Yugoloth, an old D&D daemon type. Not knowing of the Demogorgon's true origin, whether it's even the creation of the mind, there may be more similar creatures, such as the Tulpa of Pathfinder. Obviously, that's a stretch for now. We don't even know for sure if it's undead. Could ghouls and vampires be related to it? We can definitely say that there is nothing quite like it out there. The Duffer Brothers made sure of that, so let's see what future low-budget flicks will try to ride on the glory of the Demogorgon. And with this task being as difficult as it is, and with so many movies and games out there, please let me know if you find any other creatures out there that can relate to the Demogorgon. And do let me know down below, I would love to see what you find. So finally, thanks again Gargamel Gold for this request. It was a total pleasure exploring a creature of a film creatively based around the Montauk project. The creators even considered naming the series Montauk. And if you don't know what the Montauk project was, definitely something you should be looking into. So do make sure that you guys enjoy more of Stranger Things as Season 2 has been announced for 2017. So once again, please let me know what creature of what series you would like me to discuss next. And remember, your votes count as it makes it much, much easier for me to figure out and decide which monster to talk about next. I have a huge list, and the more you guys vote and suggest one, the easier I can choose it. And I have gotten much less picky on what creature you choose. So it can be any monster, any creature, any mythological creature that's featured in the movie, even if it's similar to, uh, a, even if it is a creature that's a common mythological creature. It doesn't matter, I will still research it. And sometimes the more rare it is, the more exciting. So take that into account if you're suggesting or requesting creatures for one of our other uh, series on this channel. And remember, we're also on Instagram and Facebook. We have a World of Monsters group on Facebook you can join on. And there is also our Snapchat. And if you want to discontinue or you want to reach me or, or just form a, a kind of group on here on YouTube where we can discuss things, join me at the discussions tab over at our homepage. And be sure to take a look at our World of Monsters homepage here on YouTube so you can see how many different playlists and how many sorts of creatures we actually cover on this channel and in so many different ways. So it's quite fascinating for me always to look into these creatures as I explore these things with you guys and I always try my best to reply to you in the comments down below. And remember, until next time, this has been TV Series Monsters only at World of Monsters. World of Monsters. Monsters. Is it, is it dead?